video to see if we can connect the um, Everspring motion sensor, which is the HSP02, uh, to our Z-Wave network using the Aeon Labs Z-Stick Series 2. So first of all, we're going to install the battery, which involves removing this screw here and getting inside the device. So we'll do that now. So that's the screw removed and the back just lifted off. You can see that the battery compartment is just at the top of the device here and uh, it's a lithium battery which we can uh, just pop inside and uh, get the device going. Okay so the battery is now in and you can see that um, the LED flashes on and off. This is apparently uh, according to the instructions the warm-up uh, which can take up to two minutes so we'll just wait for this uh, the device to warm up and then we'll see if we can pair it to the Z-Stick Series 2. Okay, so that's finished uh, booting up or warming up and um, what I'm going to try now is to get it to be included uh, to include it into my Z-Wave network. So what I'm going to try and do is um, press the Z-Stick uh, inclusion mode button and then I'm going to press this single switch uh, here on the Everspring to see if that puts it into inclusion mode. So we'll have a go at that first. So here we go. There's the Z-Stick flashing away and if this works it should start to flash really quickly to say it's included. Okay, so it's not. Let's try pressing it again. Nope, still nothing. Now we've got a flash here on the Everspring but uh, the Z-Stick still thinks it's not included and we'll press the... no. Aha! Three quick presses on the Everspring and you'll have seen that there was a triple flash on the Z-Stick which means that they're now hopefully paired and there was a red LED on the um, Everspring as well as that happened so three quick presses of the Everspring uh, trip switch seem to do the trick so let's put this together and see if it works okay so that's the back back onto the um, Everspring so that's now ready to start testing with and we're also going to connect this back up to my um, Mac Mini and um, see what happens. Okay, so that's connected back up to the Mac Mini and we've got the Everspring controller now ready to start testing. Okay, so this is my um, Indigo software and I'm just going to try and see if the Everspring, Everspring device is now um, found on there. Um, so if I just select the device type, uh, which is a Z-Wave, and let's see what it comes up with. So here it's saying, uh, asking me to select the node, and um, I can only assume it's uh, one of these two, which say binary sensor routing. So I'm going to go for 7, since that's probably the last one that I added. I'm not sure what 5 was. Uh, and I'm going to go for sync. So I press sync, and now I'm hoping that uh, we get a successful sync where the Z Wave Z stick communicates successfully with the Everspring device, and we can start to add them. Okay, so it says that the sensor could be in sleep mode or unreachable. So um, let me just see, uh, I'll give it a few minutes and try again and see if that works. I'll come back shortly. Okay so that's done now. What I did was I just took the back off the Everspring device just to wake it up uh, for 30 seconds and then I click sync and now I'm on this screen where it's asking me to fill in uh, the new device information. Uh, you can see it's by default uh, giving it the address 7, which we saw before, and it's called it the binary device, uh, binary sensor. I'm going to rename that to be um, kitchen. Sensor. Because this device is going to go in my kitchen. 
Uh, there's some options here that say uh, that I can give it extra um, settings. So I can wake it every hour and uh, so on, or I can change that interval. But uh, we'll just leave that for now. Um, so there we go. That's done. And you can see there that um, the highlighted one kitchen sensor says it's off. Um, so if I just move my hand around the sensor, I'm going to see if that uh, if that activates. So we'll test that, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm having a few problems here, and as you can see, I've just got myself close up to the monitor, and the kitchen device is off. I've actually got the back of the device uh, removed, which, according to the instructions, puts the device in test mode. Um, so we're in test mode now. I'm going to move the sensor, which should activate the kitchen. There we go. That's now activated, and as you see, the kitchen sensor comes on, which is fine. And if I just leave it for a few more seconds, you'll see that the kitchen sensor then goes off when there's no more movement. There we go, it's off. I'll move it one more time, and then you go straight back on. So in test mode, that works fine. But what I'm going to show you next is when I actually put the back of the uh, device um, back on, which puts it in regular mode, and you'll see a different story. Okay, so I've put the back of the device on now, and um, it's just flashing green to say it's in uh, awake mode for 30 seconds, and now it's in normal mode. So um, if I just show you now up at my monitor, the kitchen sensor's off, and no matter what I do to try and activate the sensor, it doesn't activate, it just stays off. Everything's the same, there's no indication of an LED on the light, and there's certainly no waking of the device um, on the kitchen in Indigo. So there's certainly a problem there with either the, the device itself or its interface in the Z-Wave network with Indigo 6. So um, I'll see what Indigo can do about that. Um, the guys at Indigo are pretty good at uh, looking into problems and seeing if it's a software problem. Um, and if it is, they can usually get some kind of fix available. So um, yeah, um, a partial success on the Everspring Z sensor, uh, Z Wave um, motion sensor, um, but we'll see what happens um, in a short while. I'll present another video uh, if I get any resolution to it. Just one final point about the configuration on here you'll see that when I attached the device, only the kitchen motion sensor came up. Um, it didn't give me the opportunity for a lux sensor um, for, for luminance. So as you can see um, at the top of my monitor here, um, I added um, recently on a previous video a um, Aeon Labs multi-sensor. And that one gave temperature, luminance, humidity and motion. Uh, and they all came up as separate devices within Indigo. Unfortunately Everspring doesn't come up with the lux, the uh, luminance, um, when you attach it. So the sensor in that appears that you can't use it with an indigo. I don't know if that's something that indigo can change or whether it's um, just something that, that, that can't happen but um, it's a shame that uh, that I can't get the lux readings um, to activate different parts of motion for example if it's dark switch a light on or if it's dark or light sound the alarm when the when the uh, alarm is on. Um, that sort of stuff would be really useful but with the Everspring motion sensor um, as it is at the moment, uh, you can't configure looks or re get looks readings from it in Indigo 6. Thanks for watching. I'll do another video when I've found out some more about the uh, the issues.